The National Association of Law Students have described as unwelcoming the Attorney General's third option to the General Legal Council on the fate of the four 99 students who are deemed to have passed but denied admission to the Ghana School of Law. The Attorney General, in a letter directed to the General Legal Council to admit the affected students, uh, but offered them three pathways, including an option for the students to write another exam. But the association says the third option is not fair and not progressive. Uh, we'll speak shortly to the president of the association and get a reaction from parliament. But first, my colleague Kweku Asante joins me, uh, Vazum, with details of the Attorney General's directive. Kweku, first, what are the first two options offered the General Legal Council? All right, Ernest, very interesting option. The first option that was offered by the um, Minister for Justice to the General Legal Council is to grant deferred admission to the 499 candidates with effect from May 2022. We know that part of those who took the entrance exams have already started. And so the Attorney General's suggestion on this score was to grant them deferred admission to next year. But then steps were supposed to be taken to ensure that they graduate or get called to the bar at the same time with their colleagues who sat for this year's um, entrance exams. Okay. So that is the first option. The second is to grant admission to the entire 499 candidates with effect from November 2021, that is this month, mm -hmm. and make provision for the organization of classes in a way as to be able to cater for the needs of the entire candidates of the part one of the professional law program. Because also here we know that the colleagues have already started, and if they are supposed to start now, then some provisions must be put in place to ensure that they get at par with their colleagues. So those are the first two, but does the third option not contradict the first and second options? Because if these students have passed and should be admitted, as the first and second option says, then why should the third option be to retake the exam, sit the exam again? All right, so that is a contradiction. That is what these students are kicking against. They have few of internal contradictions in the letter itself. But... The Attorney General seeks to almost make the point that these students have passed. And that is that is what informed the first and second option that he gave to the General Legal Council to admit these students. And so if the first two options are for these students to be admitted because they are deemed to have passed the exams, then why are we asking them to take another exams? Because if you are taking a reset, and this is usually a reset, it means that you have not passed and we are giving you another opportunity to take the exams again. Mm. And what will even inform that? Because the entrance exams has no pathway for a reset. So exactly. there are students who have already failed the exams who will not have any opportunity to take this exam again mm. unless they wait for next year. Mm. So if you are saying that these students are fast, then why are you asking them to take the exams again? Yeah. And that is why this third option seems to contradict the first and second option that the Attorney General gives the general. And in course. fact, this third option could deny some of the 499 students already uh, who are deemed to have passed, deny them admission. But there's another issue right. with the Attorney General being a member of the General Legal Council, now advising the same council to do uh, right. something which he will be part of in making the decision. So he's the Attorney General, uh, but he's also a member of the General Legal Council. He now advises the council to take a decision. There seems to be an issue with that. Right. So if you look at the Attorney General's letter to the General Legal Council, it starts by saying that the Attorney General is exercising his constitutional rights and his lawful rights to direct the General Legal Council because the organization forms part of his ministry. Mm. But then if you come to the options, then he switches and says, I'm advising you. Mm. And if you're advising someone, then it means they can either decide to take it or not take it. But if you're advising them, the Attorney General is a member of the General Legal Council. He is part of those who took the actions that have been impugned by the public that have come under severe criticism. Yeah. And so the Attorney General is advising them to take these three options. He's supposed to sit in a meeting of this council to decide on these three options, which of them to take. So for instance, if the Attorney General offered them only one option and said that admit the students, then that would have literally also been a decision of the General Legal Council anyway, because the Attorney General is part of the body. But now he's giving them three options, mm -hmm is expected to go sit in the meetings to decide on which of these three options they are supposed to follow. Some of the internal contradictions that this letter has, has put out. But the defense has been that the Attorney General has a constitutional duty to play. And whether or not he is part of that body does not deviate from this show that he has to play. Mm. So the example is given that the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court is empaneled by the Chief Justice. It is his constitutional duty to empanel the court. If someone sued him in his personal capacity as a chief justice, 
he will still be the one to empanel the court. Mm. So he has that constitutional duty to play, but it has nothing to do with his membership of the council. But on that note of constitutional duty, is it not interesting that the Attorney General starts by, uh, you know, saying he's exercising his lawful powers to direct the General Legal Council, but ends up with, uh, you know, suggestions and inconsistencies mm. in there. So he says right. the President has instructed him to intervene. Then he says he is... Based on the exactly based on what the law allows him to do, directing, uh, which allows him to direct the general legal council. But then when it comes to the option, says he advises the general legal council, and the students right. are not and quite happy with this. Yeah. So you make a very interesting point. If you take a look at the letter, it quotes a part of what the president wrote to him, and what the president said was to the effect that these students should be admitted. And so if the president has directed the attorney general to get these students admitted, the letter starts by saying that I'm directing you pursuant to the powers I have under the act that set up this organization. But ends up literally saying that these are suggestions, these are advice that I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. And of course, the attorney general has been a part of the general legal council from the start. And so when exactly. they were taking all these decisions, he was supposed to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so some are even asking, why did he sit for the for the issue to get to this point before you come in on issue directives mm. or advice as in this letter. Google, well, thank you very much for bringing us those details in the uh, letter, you know, written by the Attorney General to the General Legal Council. Let's speak to the President of the National Association of Law Students, Asari Hassan. Uh, Hassan, thank you very much for your time. You're joining Prime. You have issues with the third option. Uh, why is that? I mean, these are avenues to hopefully get a number of you into the law school as you've always been asking. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Let me say good evening to your listeners. Um, I think there is a portion of the letter that your colleague did not maybe take a very good look. Okay. But it has to do with transparency and integrity of the process of admission. Mm. Transparency, integrity of the process of admission. The next one that I saw was then an advice with the three notices. Now, yeah. the question here is this. If the concern has to do with the integrity and the transparency of the admission process, without questioning whether or not the student passed, which indirectly, by the one and two, you are saying they have passed, why do they have to write a third exam? And the third exam actually stipulates that it needs to be done within this month. We have 19 days to finish with this month. Again, the psychological trauma that we've gone through for the period we might not be in the right frame of mind mm. to sit for another exam and expect all of us to pass. But in any case, we have passed. So for me, since it is just a directive or an advice an to the advice. GLC, mm. we should wait for the um, feedback from the GLC, which I feel will come within a couple of days. Then we can look at the issue. But mm. I think the third option is not something that is welcoming in that it will look like Indeed, you are saying we fail. Mm, but, but, but we know we did not fail. Hasan, the clock is ticking and you have a lot of issues happening. There's the issue in Parliament, there's this letter, and you are also in court. Uh, what is your next line of action, really? Um, our next line of action is to wait on the GLC since they've been directed to act. And I'm sure they'll act quickly. And right after that, we'll know which line of action to take. But for now, we are waiting because we feel... Um, Another option when it comes to legalese has to do with ADR. There's okay. always an alternative dispute resolution, mm. which we feel this one seeks to actually take care of. So we would explore that option and see the outcome, then after which we would decide on which way to go. Thank but you very as much. as I've indicated, the third is not welcoming, and it's not something that we are looking to get. Hassan, I'm grateful that you could join us. That's Hassan Asari, a president of the Law Students Association, joining us on that latest development.